Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. On a lot of my recent videos I have seen in the comments that many people were confused with the different components of the autoflight system in the Boeing 737 and didn't quite understand what is actually doing what. So this video is not aimed at a complete system tutorial like the other system tutorials that I've done. But it is more aimed at explaining those of you who are unsure exactly what is doing what in the auto flight system to give you a general overview so that you can better understand what the different things are doing. So, looking into the auto flight system, we have to look into two different systems that is the auto flight director system and the auto throttle. So, the general concept in here is that the auto flight system is composed of the autopilot flight director system and the auto throttle and the flight management computer is only providing N1 limits and target N1 to the auto throttle and command airspeeds for the auto throttle and AFDS. The AFDS and auto throttle are controlled using the AFDS mode control panel and the FMC. Normally, however, the AFDS and auto throttle are controlled automatically by the FMC in LNAV and VNAV modes to fly an optimized lateral and vertical path through climb, cruise and descent. The different AFS modes are displayed on the flight mode annunciator on each pilot's primary flight display. Now, that is how Boeing is describing the system. So let's go into it and let's have a look at it in a little bit more simplified way. So we have the Autopilot Flight Director System, AFDS. It consists of two independent flight control computers referred to as FCC A and B. And it consists of one mode control panel. And those are the main inputs of the Autopilot Flight Director System. You see the FMC is not listed on this particular slide. And let's actually have a look why that is. Let's start by talking about the flight control computers. So we have two different FCCs which provide um, data to the autopilot flight director system. And it can provide data to the autopilot and data to the flight director. Now. If it provides data to the autopilot, then you have to give a particular close look to the green master light above the flight director switches. Because while the FCCs are working independent from one another, the, auto the autopilot can only be controlled by either one. With a couple of certain exceptions, but I'm not going to go into those in this video, so if this is a little bit simplified and you know better, then I appreciate that. But Let's keep it simple in this one. We want to provide some basic understanding. So, what actually is the flight director and what actually is the autopilot then? Well, the flight director is basically where all the thinking goes ahead. So, the flight control computer makes up what you want to do by taking the inputs from the mode control panel and transferring them into commands as to what the airplane is supposed to do. And that's all taking place in the flight control computer, not in the FMC, so not in the flight management computer. Different systems, remember that. So the two flight control computers ca can position the uh, flight director command bars on the respective ADIs, independent from one another. And they can send control commands to the respective pitch and roll hydraulic servos of the autopilot. Now, let's talk about this a little bit more in depth. Don't worry, I'll make it simple. So, everything that the autopilot does, everything that you see the autopilot do, is actually the flight control computer commanding the autopilot to do certain things. The autopilot itself is nothing more than the pitch and roll hydraulic servos of the autopilot system. So that means the autopilot actually is a very, very dumb machine, which basically follows all the commands that the flight control computers have developed. The flight director is the means how the flight control computer can show to the pilot what the autopilot is supposed to do. 
However, be aware that it is possible to engage the autopilot with the flight director command bars turned off. But since the FCCs are computing what the autopilot is supposed to do, the autopilot can still fly it. And you are simply not going to see the flight director command bars when the flight director switches are off. However, the autopilot can still be used. But the important thing to keep okay, the important thing to remember from this slide is that the autopilot is just a dump servo that is carrying out the commands of the flight control computers. Now we have two flight control computers in the Boeing 737, A and B. And the one that is commanding the autopilot is determined by the master light above the flight directors. Now, if the autopilot is engaged in command A, FCCA is going to command the autopilot. And if it's engaged in command B, FCCB is going to command the autopilot. As said, there are some exceptions which I'm not going to go into in this video. The green master light is always indicating to you which FCC is giving commands to the AFDS. And that is especially important when you are flying manually with only the flight director engaged. Because FCCA on the left hand side is going to use the NAV radio number 1 with the left course selector. And FCCB on the right hand side is going to use the right radio, so the number 2 radio, and the right course selector. So if you want to follow data from the left radio, be sure to use the um, left side as master. And if you want to follow data from the right end radio, be sure to use the right FCC as master. You know which one is the master by looking at which of the two master lights are illuminated above the flight director switches. And if you want to switch in between them, simply switch between autopilot A and B, provided that the autopilot is engaged. Or turn off the flight director on the side that you don't want to use, while the side that you want to use is turned on. And then you can re-engage the other one. And that way you can basically move the master mode around. Now, this much about the computers that are actually controlling the autopilot system. Let's have a look at how we are doing inputs to it then. For that, we have the mode control panel, and we only have a single one available. We can see that in the picture, we have the master side on the left side, as command A is engaged. So, the MCP is used to select modes for the AFDS and auto throttle. And a very common misconception here is that green lights do not indicate active modes, but they show that a mode can be deselected by pressing the button again. So, very important here. It is not possible to determine which mode is active or engaged by looking at the green lights. All the lights indicate is that a mode can be deselected. Now, if you want to know what the exact switches on the MCP do, I've made a separate video about it, which is fairly complete, so I can very much recommend you look into it. It is going to be in linked in the video description below, but do bring along about an hour time, because the MCP is a fairly complex thing. So, I said that you cannot see which modes are active by looking at the green lights, so... How can you actually see it then? That is by looking at the FMA, the Flight Mode Annunciator. It is shown on the top of the primary flight displays, as you can see in the two examples that are shown at the bottom of the slide. And the only way to see which modes are active is by looking at the FMA. The general format is on the left side you have the auto throttle mode, in the middle you have the lateral mode, and on the right side you have the vertical mode. So if we have a look at the left side here, we can see the auto throttle is operating in FMC speed. The horizontal navigation is taking place in LNAV and the vertical navigation is in VNAV path. On the right example here, we can see that when there is a box drawn around one of the FMAs, then this is actually a newly engaged mode that became active in the last 10 seconds. So in this case, we can see that from the left example, where we have been cruising at 37,000 feet, we've actually just about started our descent. The auto throttle is retarding the thrust levers to the idle position, 
and VNAV path has engaged to follow our vertical path. Now, it is very, very important for the pilots to know the correct FMAs. And during the type rating, pilots are actually taught to understand which mode is going to become active next and which modes would you expect when the system is supposed to do certain things. And here's just an example from the flight crew operations manual where you can see how such training might look like. On the left side, we have an, a takeoff with the automatic flight director system. And we can see that initially, when you push the toga switch with both flight directors on and auto throttle armed, it is going to go into N1, heading select toga. At 84 knots, the thrust hold mode engages. At 800 feet radio, the auto throttle arm mode engages and so on and so on and so on. So this is basically what pilots have to learn. On the right side there we can see what a fail operational autopilot approach would look like and how your FMAs might change. I shouldn't say might change, I, su I should say need to change, because if they do anything else than this, then you know as a pilot that the autoflight director system is not working the way that it is supposed to and that can potentially indicate trouble. Now we've talked a lot about the FCCs and the lateral and horizontal navigation, but we can see there is still one other important part of the autoflight system and that is the autothrottle. So the autothrottle is not quite as complex, so let's have a brief look at it. The autothrottle provides automatic thrust control from the start of the takeoff until landing or go around, and it actually uses FMC data to determine the N1 limits. It can at any time be overwritten by the pilots. By the way, I apologize for the typo I did on screen here. So it can at any time be overwritten by the pilots by simply moving the thrust lever. And for those of you who are using the PMDG 737, there are options available for it, so do check those out and have a look at the introduction manual to see how you can override the autothrottle. We actually do it fairly commonly, especially in turbulent conditions, but also on approach where we just want the speed control to be a little bit more precise than what the autothrottle usually provides. Now, the, the electronic engine controls are recommended to be in on or alternate modes when the autothrottle is operating, but not necessarily, even when they, the EECs are off, the autothrottle is available. However, larger splits between the two different um, thrust levers can occur with the um, EECs off. So, that is the autothrottle. You can see that the autothrottle is actually the first case here where we actively brought the FMC into account. So. Let's have a look at what the FMCs are actually doing then. So they are only used with the AFDS for LNAV and VNAV and with the autothrottle to determine N1 limits well, and VNAV for speed control if uh, VNAV mode is engaged. In no other modes is the FMC used by the autoflight system. So that is a very, very important thing here to keep in mind. Let's imagine you have a dual FMC failure, which does happen. I have had several in my career already. The only modes that will not be available are going to be LNAV, VNAV, and N1 limits. In other words, all other modes are going to be available and you can use the autoflight system to get you down without any further troubles, because the FMC is pretty much not related to the autoflight system, as long as LNAV and VNAV modes are not used. Now, as Boeing said themselves in the AFCOM, the normal modes in AFDS are FMC modes, because they are LNAV and VNAV. However, you can see that the autoflight system is perfectly going to work without the FMC. So, I would like to thank you very, very much for being here on this video. And before you guys leave, I just want to give many thanks to my Patreons. As of right now, and in no particular order, Aaron, Jens, Mark, Madness88, Camilla, Sergio, 
VOS Forever, Cal 2024 and Sergey. Thank you very much for your support. If you want to consider becoming a Patreon, you'll find the link to it in the video description below. And of course, a huge thanks to all the countless people who bought me a coffee so far. You guys, all of you Patreons and my dear fellow coffee supporters, you guys are the best. You make this channel possible. Thank you very much for being here. I'm very much looking forward to see you all again on the next video.